introduction to one of my favorite people on earth, Mr. Stephen Oliver, who is with the Advisor Marketing Podcast. Now, Stephen is a true maverick, and I mean that in every sense of the word, not only in our business, but I have to tell you, his clients universally love him, and they grow at rates that they wouldn't believe it's possible. Now, on this podcast, in each episode, Stephen is joined by various members of his team or special guests to share insider secrets to rapid growth and high net profits in your financial advisory practice. So I just want you to know you're in for a wild ride, new information, and a lot of exciting new future because of Stephen Oliver. Hey there. So um, uh, welcome back for whoever. Uh, you can be live, I should oh, I, I should, uh, I should not have. Uh, um, me talking in uh, in delay on the uh, behind here, uh, but anyway, Stephen Oliver again, financial advisor, marketing. I am joined by uh, quite a character, and but you, you, Rob, you're quite the marketing expert. Um, I I wanted to share a couple of things just right off the bat to give people some uh, some idea of your creativity, and and we'll uh, we'll share an awful lot of other stuff with them while while we go here. But this is a, a little graphic you put together with just a few of your books. How many how many books have you actually done now? I, I, the number thirty is ringing around in my mind. So yeah, it's, we produced number thirty six just a few days ago, and and that's thirty six books in nine years. And and I mean, I, I didn't I didn't intend to be a publisher. I didn't intend to even be an author. Yeah. But the the first book right up in the corner share was my first print book. It's all about social media, and that came out nine years ago. And and uh, from that point, people were like, hey, Rob, can you help me with my book? Can you do this? Can you do that? And, and so we've helped lawyers and doctors and, and uh, you know, other speakers and, and other writers. And, you know, and I've also launched my own line of books. And, um, you know, it, it just it was an opportunity that uh, I, I just kind of grabbed by the, the horns and, and, and ran with it. And, um, you know, when, when I shopped around the first book, to publishers they all wanted thick books describing you know mundane things on how to do social media and i just wanted it interesting i wanted it fun i i didn't want a thick book I, I, it's only 120 pages yeah and uh so i created my own publishing company and published it myself and immediately sold 2,000 copies and i was like wow okay i think i got this <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but well uh, you know I, I, the number I heard is, uh, you know, a nationally published book in a, in the um, um, uh, do it yourself or I guess nonfiction would be the right term. You know, a, a national bestseller is like 5,000 copies. Mm -hmm. And, and that's with, um, um, you know, a publisher getting the lion's share of that. And then they don't do anything for it. I, yeah. I don't know if you ever read, there was a great book by Gene Simmons, uh, Sex Money Kiss. I don't know. No, I don't know heard it, about it. Never read it. It's 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 a great business book, and of course, it's got his opinion on you know sex and marriage and one thing or another too. But he has a um I I one chapter or a couple chapters on them publishing a tabletop kiss book, mm -hmm. and he had seen somebody's book. I I forget who it was, but he he had seen a book that he really liked and and wanted to kind of duplicate that. And he's thinking they have the Kiss Army, you know, which is their fan mm -hmm. club of you know, a uh, um, you know, huge number of raving fans. I, I was he, a part of that club in 1978. There you go. I, I, I imagine I was too. I, uh, you know, I, I remember seeing them on, uh, you know, the, 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 their tours a couple times when I was in high school, as well as more, more recently on the senior tour, you know, they practically have to go out <laughs> in, in uh, you know, in wheelchairs and walkers at this point, you know, Gene Simmons at uh, whatever he is, spitting blood is a little comical, but, uh, but that's another story. But but the book was really fascinating because he talked about his experience doing this book he wanted to do. And the reason I like it is it's such a great entrepreneurial journey. And, you know, anybody who knows anything about Gene Simmons, you know, knows that he's like the entrepreneur behind the, you know, behind the operation. And he talks about he went to New York, met with the big publishers and one thing or another. And they were all telling him they should be, you know, and this is a big tabletop, really nice thing they're putting together that the retail should be $35 and they're telling him that he's going to get like 7%. And, you know, they expect to sell four or 5,000 copies or something like that. And by the time he's done with them, he basically went like this to the publishers, 
he found a, a, a similar book that he liked and hired <clears> the person <throat> who did the editing, put them up in the guest house, put it all together himself, self-published it. If I remember correctly, sold it for 149, where they were telling him to sell for 35. And they were telling him that maybe it'd sell 5,000. I think, I think the numbers were north of 60,000 or something like that, that he sold some, you know, some ridiculous number. He did a well over a million net on the deal, but it, it's the, it's the interesting story of an entrepreneurial approach to something that, you know, he, he had never done it before, but he just said, you know, the way that they're talking about doing this is just crazy. And, uh, Rob, overall, I mean, you are, uh, uh, as I could best define it, um, a very eclectic marketing guru. Uh, is, is, is that a, a fair description? Of, a very eclectic you... and sarcastic. <laughs> ah, let's not forget that, and sarcastic. Yeah. And um, um, like I told you, I did, I did extensive research um, prior to us talking today. Um, that, that extensive research was what, five minutes? <laughs> um, um, it, I, th I think it was three minutes of multitasking, but uh, but I, I I did have the advantage of following your stuff for you know several years now and and reading several of your books, including your lessons from the dojo, you know our our shared background. But but you actually do a lot of search marketing, website development, um, um, helping people with their online marketing. Uh, and, and, and real businesses, uh, uh, legal firms, attorneys, uh, doctors, and so forth, and are, are quite an expert, both at article, you know, writing articles, blogs. Mm -hmm. uh, your podcast is now at what, episode number 302 no, or something like it's, that? It's uh, 200, and I just recorded the, the 221st episode, and um, but yeah, it, it's been going well. I was exaggerating, but, but you I get a, a lot, yeah. A lot of them, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, do you, what? What do you do? A couple a week? Uh, what, what? What's your frequency? Well, I I try to batch record them, so I'll record you know six or seven of them at a time. That way, the whole month and a half is taken care of, and then I don't have to worry about them for a while. Yeah. Now I do have uh, I think thirteen of them pre-recorded. Uh, that'll take me till the end of December, and I'm working on January's now. But you know, it, it's I, I used to record once a week, and then yeah. I found that I just didn't have time. Or I was caught up in doing something else. So this way, I just, hey, we're going to record this week. Anybody who's interested, let's go. And, and you know, I, I don't, I don't like you, I don't jump in. I don't do bios. I don't do crazy yeah. music. I don't do extra. It's just, to me, it's just get the information out there. Let people introduce themselves and, you know, and go from there. And, 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 you know, people love my show only because I have fun with them. I don't. I don't ask him personal questions. I, I, I ask him and try to stick mostly with business mm -hmm. or how they got to where they're got, you know, or their origin story, how they became this, you know, awesome superhero. And, uh, you know, I, I don't really have, I, I like you, I, I don't do a lot of research. You know, I, I jump in. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. Let's go. Yeah. And, yeah. and I, I, I go where the conversation's going. I, I, I think you can't under, and you already said two things. That for everybody who's a financial advisor listening to this should should really have made a note of and, and taken it away. One is with all of the books that you've done, an awful lot of them are relatively short, mm -hmm. very entertaining. Uh, they're not designed to be textbooks. They're designed to cover a subject. And sometimes the subject is sarcasm and wit and messing with people. I, I love the uh, Rob versus the morons versus the scammers <laughs> versus the wackadoos. Um, I'm going to I'm going to steal the wackadoos uh, um, uh, line uh, somewhere along the line, because uh, especially in our, our 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 mutual love of martial arts going back a ways, there's a lot of wackadoos in, no, yeah. in, in, in that side. You know, uh, the uh, thing is, is that it started out with with Rob versus the scammers and, and anybody who's ever taken the calls, you know, the Visa MasterCard, you know, scams. And, and, and uh, I, I was getting so frustrated. I was getting, you know, 30 calls a day. And I finally said, you know, enough's enough. Let's try to, you know, keep them on the phone and just, you know, antagonize them as much as they are me. And 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 I would share these conversations to Facebook and people would laugh and they'd carry on. Rob, send me more. You know, this is bright in my day. And so I assembled about 50 of these stories into a book. And after each story, I, I put a little life lesson or business lesson or 
or, or some commentary that helps business owners overcome something. Yeah. And, and people just love them. Yeah. Now, you know, when I was putting it together, I, I put it out there. I said, Hey, give me some feedback. And, you know, one person says, Rob, it's just a collection of stories. Nobody's going to care. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. I'm going for it. Yeah, I, yeah. I know I have something. And even if it helps, you know, a few people, that's all I care about. And but people really love them. And and so I, I, I pressed on and, and and I had enough material for Rob versus the morons. And it was the same thing. It was just customer service going through the uh, the pandemic was just going. It was, it was horrible. Oh, yeah. No, oh, yeah. And, and so that was and then. Six months later, I followed up with Rob versus Humanity because at that point, COVID was just full fledged out there. And um, but now there's six of them. Yeah, and, I love uh, it. You know, I, I was approached to uh, uh, consider the the books into a TV show. Oh, okay. So we wrote the pilot episode, mm -hmm. and and the thing is about the pilot versus the books is that I for TV you have to have an ensemble cast, so right. you have to bring in more characters than just me going against these scammers so sure. it, was, it was a little bit interesting to write this out to bring character development to other things but it's just like business i mean everybody that works for you has to have some type of character input into how you run yeah uh, and and you can take it with a grain of salt and say yeah just like the, the person who didn't like the stories where you can say look this is how we're going to go forward uh, and I have a good feeling about this. Let's continue. Exactly. And, and okay. um, but I, I think too many people get sucked into the, oh my God, that one person critiqued it and said it was bad. So I better not do it. Yeah. I, 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 I got, I got one comment on social media of somebody said that was stupid. And I got freaked out. <laughs> like <laughs> really <laughs> somebody had an opinion. Imagine that somebody whose yeah. opinion doesn't count, shared their opinion with you and you're freaked out about it. I, I, I always find that dynamic to be funny, you know, and, and uh, in, in the various businesses that I've worked with, you know, I, I find so many of them that made a process change because somebody complained about what they did. Right. And all of a sudden it, it changed. They changed everything they were doing or some, you know, important criteria just because somebody had an opinion. And, and, you know, I I'm, I'm happy that everybody has an opinion. They're, they're welcome not to share it with me. Um, and uh that that was that that was one of the time management tricks I um, I I used to teach the, uh, the martial arts school operators is you know er, you know everybody in the middle of the day is you know always coming up to them do you have a minute and the first thing was look at their watch and say no not really but what did you need right because uh, yeah. most uh, most of the time if somebody's trying to share their opinion about doing something they have no idea what to do uh, mostly because they're on their off hours and they think their opinion is valuable. But yeah. if the, you know the, the the two points that, that came right out of your mouth that I want to make sure nobody missed was one is I, I try to get advisors to do a book or a series of books a, a a a marvelous tool for marketing themselves is to have a a new small book a quarter or a couple a year or something like that but then they can you know print them physically they can do it digitally but you know physical is much better on this stuff mm -hmm. where where they can mail them to all of their clients, their clients can use them as pass alongs. But the other thing is you mentioned batching. Um, and like with, with, uh, with my podcast, we kicked it off by just sequestering ourselves in the room with a video camera for, for two days and knocked out what ended up being 15 episodes. And frankly, if I was more organized, it probably would have been 20, you know, we did a lot of BSing around the edges and, you know, long breaks for lunch and so forth. But but the the batching is is something that I've always done. You know, we'll go, you know, if we're doing if we're doing a blog, we'll go create you know uh, six months worth of the stuff, mm -hmm. and then worry about it later. If we're doing podcasts, um, and I've been doing a couple of week recently, but usually it's going to be I'm going to set aside a couple of days, get you know get a quarter's worth done, and then be be done with it and move on. The but the the yet the other thing that that was right there buried in the conversation is and this is especially true now you've worked with mds and 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 lawyers and they're as boring and buttoned down as the financial advisors right um but you know i keep trying to get the advisors to have something interesting about them right mm -hmm. and it's to me it's like um I, I i stole this from tim ferris you know in his four-hour workweek book the 
they had this avatar of the balding fat guy in the red BMW convertible or something like that. And him and his buddy didn't want to be the bald fat guy. Well, to me, the financial advisors are all the guys in the JC Penney suit sitting behind an Oak desk with, you know, with two diplomas behind them. And that's about all that's interesting about them. And, uh, you know, in the, in the legal field, I, I, you know, I had hired, uh, Perkins Cooey for a while when we were doing franchising and, well, one of them was billing me $1,100 an hour. One of them was billing me $580 an hour. And what I always remembered about them was, you know, about half the times we met, they were in jeans and so forth. One of them was, uh, it was a husband and wife team, and they were into mountain biking and hiking, and they had all kinds of interesting hobbies. Now, I hired them because I knew their credentials were better than anybody else I could find. And of course, you know, when I was sitting around the conference room, you know, looking at my clock, clicking off what I was being charging for the hour you know because sometimes we'd have meetings with four people in there i was going oh my god i just i just uh you know paid twenty six hundred dollars for this uh this meeting but what 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 kept me engaged was they were humans right they were interesting they had interesting hobbies we could talk about other things other than just you know they go get a a law book out and with the advisors i work with you know i've got one of the guys who's uh he's german and he's into porsches and He's trying to collect one of every generation of the Porsche 911 Turbo. And I keep saying, well, well, hell, you should have the office with the garage, with the glass window, and you have all the German street signs up, and you have the conference room overlooking the Porsches. And then what we do is we do the Porsche Club, you know, uh, the Colorado group, the national group. We do a column in the, in the Porsche Club thing. We do things with the dealership. Why wouldn't you, right? Um, it's, it's all that stuff that makes people interesting T talk more about that. I mean, obviously oh. you and I share that opinion of, of it's better to be a human and to be an expert in your field than it is to be an expert in your field and be an automaton. Well, most, most of the lawyers and I, and, and the doctors that I work with have all gone to the Vulcan school of no emotion. And, mm -hmm. and you talk about being human. <clears throat> They don't know how to do that. And, yeah. you know, one of the first things that I, I, I asked them to do is just pick up their phone and make some videos. Yep. You know, and, and a lot of them are perfectionists. They want to have a, prof a professional crew come in and make it so professional. They're all standing behind their law degrees. And, and that's all fine and good. But you know what? In today's day and age with social media, people don't want professional. They want, they want you to be on their same level. Mm -hmm. So when you pick up your phone and, and you start, you know, Maybe you start off with frequently asked questions. Yeah. You know, one question, one video. And, and, and you make it, you could crank out 50 of them in no time. And now you have these 50 videos that show your personality, mm -hmm. show who you are. And, and now people are like, wow, I, I, I need to call him because not only does I, not only do I, I like him, but, uh, you know, people trust him and he makes me feel safe. Yeah. So, you know, but <clears throat> Yeah, the, the the human thing right now. Yeah, you have to do it. Yeah, the the for for me, sarcasm is my superpower, mm -hmm. and it allows me to, you know, open up. It allows me to joke and have fun, and and that's how the whole series of of Rob verses came out. It was, just, yeah, I've written other books. They're not funny, but they're they teach you stuff, mm -hmm. and and the other you know we're going through this whole pandemic thing and people lost their sense of humor and we need humor back in, in, in society today. And, and so people are reading these books and they're laughing and they're remembering me and, and they can see themselves in this situation. And, and so every person out there that's listening, figure out what your, your personality really is. Yeah. Like you said, the, the, this guy had all these Porsches and, 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 and people would, could come to him and see these Porsches, that's an opening conversation. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and and people would see that and wow, you know, I, I like the older Porsches. I don't, I'm not really into the new Porsches. Yeah. <clears throat> but let's say maybe you're a lawyer and you do accident um, litigation and people see you have all these Porsches. Well, yeah, that goes together. Oh, yeah. You know, you're, you're maybe you're, you're a financial consultant, but your personality is you know you love baseball take, yeah take people to baseball games and show them what their money can do down the road if they invest right oh yeah 
Yeah. And, 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 and there, there's all different ways of going with that. Uh, you know, when I, when I have a new client I'm working with, one of the first things that in, in, like you said, you know, it's the Spock, uh, you know, the, the, the Vulcan personality deficit thing is it, uh, first thing I do is ask them, you know, what are their hobbies? What it is that they do? What, what, what are their other social events? What I've got one that I'm working with, who's big into, you know, uh, uh, right-wing politics in, uh, in Arizona. And it's like, well, okay, let's use that. Well, what do you mean? You know, I have some clients who are Democrats. Well, no, but you, you probably have mostly people who think like you, and there's an awful lot more people who think like you that should be clients than you have. So why don't we go get all the ones that think like you and, um, and, um, and lead with that or, and it, does, and it doesn't have to be exclusive. You know, you can, you can do a lot of different things. The, um, um, go, going back to this idea though, is again, attorneys are all afraid of the bar association. The MDs are afraid of the AMA and the, you know, the financial advisors are afraid of compliance. And, you know, if they're captive with a big company, they're afraid of, you know, what their company is going to let them do, but they're also afraid of, um, you know, a FINRA and or the SEC. And, mm -hmm appropriately so in that you don't want to be making false earnings claims or if you're an attorney you don't want to be making uh claims about things that you can't accomplish if you're a doctor you don't want to be making claims about meds that aren't accurate and so forth but all the things that i that i see you doing that that i'm trying to get people to do they don't have anything at all to do with the regulatory environment right they are a hundred percent about let's be different let's figure out an audience to target that we can affil you know, uh, have affinity with. And, you know, well, so what's in your background? Who's a group of people that, that would have affinity with you? Let's figure out how to get on their level. And, and, and you talked about the, the video thing. I mean, I've seen some great stuff recently. And, you know, with years of video training and so forth, I was always <laughs> trying to get people to have, you know, a professional look and, you know, right. hold it landscape and all, you know, all of that kind of stuff. But nowadays it's, you know, let's do the selfie and let's make it interesting. And I just happened to be out here and I had a thought about a question that I was asked recently. And that's powerful. I mean, and it's powerful in Facebook for the older crowd is powerful and TikTok for the younger crowd is powerful you know, all across all the platforms. I, I was never a fan of TikTok. And, no. uh, I, and I, I was a holdout for, for years. I, I just didn't want to get on it. And I told everybody there's no way I'm ever getting on it. <clears throat> and uh, one day I thought, you know what? I have all this content. I have all these videos, all these interviews, all, all this stuff I have on YouTube. Why not share it over on TikTok? Yeah. And I did. And immediately, I think within a month, I got two new clients. And I'm like, okay, if it took me very little time, why did I hold out for all this time? But you know, we, we have these, we have these impressions of cer certain things and I, I get it. You know, it's, maybe it's not our demographic, you know, cause most of the people on TikTok are pointing or dancing. That's not for me. Yeah. Um, but when you can recycle some of your old stuff and put it on a new network, whether you're there all the time or not, it's going to help. Oh yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> well, and, and, and nowadays you can have it, you can have stuff out everywhere. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and the more places, the more places people find you, the more more um, uh, places they stumble across you, the better off you are. And uh, again, it you know, like you you did a wonderful. I, I, in fact, I pulled it up too in my extensive preparation prior to our meeting here. But um, um, you know, you did you did a review of, of my new book, which I really appreciated uh, that as well. And it frankly is a little different than what we're talking about for. Uh, that you're usually getting your clients to do that I'm getting my clients to do because it, you know, it comes out at about 350 pages. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I believe at least it's, it's pretty in depth on right. everything from LinkedIn marketing to YouTube to podcasting to SEO and, and all of that. And, and it was done intentionally for that. I, I wanted it to be a little bit more like a textbook and something that could go to this, you know, the marketing director at LPL or one thing or another and, and be at that, that mm -hmm. corporate level. But most of what, uh, in fact, I learned this lesson. Go, this is how far back it goes. In 1999, I had a friend who was doing nutritional uh, stuff and they were trying to um, uh, really 
maximize their marketing online. And of course, back then it was, you know, Google didn't really exist yet. Right. It was, um, uh, you know, uh, go to, uh, which became overture, uh, mm -hmm. which is where Google got the idea was the only pay-per-click source. And then you had, um, uh, Alta Vista was the number one search engine. So we were trying to get in Alta Vista and we were trying to do Yahoo and we were, you know, experimenting with go to, um, and so forth. But I did a book on internet marketing in 1999. Um, and it was originally for martial arts schools and it kind of broadened itself out. And then I did another book on direct response marketing and both of them were very de technical and detailed. They weren't very big, but they were, you know, how to, how to do search placement, all the software and everything. And then I ended up packaging in this program called extraordinary marketing. And I thought, well, it really needs something else. So I got on my Harley, went up to Aspen. I'm, I'm in Evergreen. So I'm only, uh, uh, you know, two and a half, three hours away sat in this little restaurant bar with my laptop, such as it was, you know, in 1999 and wrote this other book. And I sat next to all day, all, all ne uh, next to Kurt Russell. And I don't know Kurt Russell. He just happened to be there. He and Goldie Hawn had a big ranch in Aspen, I guess. But I, I, I knocked out this book in, in, I don't know, probably eight hours total and called it everything I wish I knew when I was 22. Now of all of the stuff I did in this program, all the work I put on internet marketing, on search, on what a website should look like. And by the way, a lot of it still holds up, you know, I mean, it's, um, and then I did all this, all this work on how to write headlines and how to design ads. And well, the thing that everybody talked about was the everything I wish I knew was 22, which is more or less like, like some of your books, which is, you know, just life lessons. And, right. you know, this happened and I laughed at this and this guy, in fact, it's in that box you held up. Uh, we're, 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 uh, it's been rewritten four or five times um, since. And there you go. There you go. Um, it's been rewritten four or five times. But, you know, when the first iteration came out and again, it was just sitting in a little bar next to Kurt Russell writing this thing. Almost all the feedback we got was on that book. It, it, it just shocked me. It was. Yeah, there you go. It was the, it was the one that was uh, personality laden. And then the other book in that box, by the way, was just a, a compilation of client newsletters all and all of them are pretty snarky and sarcastic not at your level i mean that i i, I will not try to take away your superpower that's it but um, um but you know they all start with you know i was on my motorcycle and i'm following a car and and, and you know they had a bumper sticker that says i'm the 99 percent and I had to laugh at that. And don't get me wrong. There's firefighters and teachers who, you know, know they're never going to make any money. But if for anybody to proudly proclaim that they're going to be in the broke group instead of the rich group uh, is, a, is a pretty ballsy, uh, um, sad state of affairs. And, you know, it, it would just, you know, evolve from from there. So you know, but you and I both took our common experiences, shared them in a book. And there is nothing that prevents anybody else from doing the same. No. No. And, and, you know, one of the things that I always encourage people, <clears throat> if you have a podcast, you're sharing that information out everywhere. Take all those episodes and put them into a book. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, we yeah. have one client that every 50 episodes or every 52 episodes, a whole year's worth goes into another volume of a book. Sure. And he hands those books out. And regardless of people listen to his podcast, every time they contact him, he puts a box like this with his books sends them out. So he got he has uh, one book. It's just all about him and his practice and how he became a superhero. Yeah. Then the, the 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 next three or four volumes of his podcast, and people read those and they're like, "Wow, this is like a super lawyer." I'm gonna, I, yeah, that's the only person I want to talk to. Oh yeah. And yeah. and so you know, um, anybody who has a podcast can record once, transcribe it, goes into a book, goes into, a, you know, blog articles, mm -hmm. take snippets of that, put it on your social media and you're done for the whole year. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, 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 and the, the podcast, you do video and then you have the audio track, uh, as you said, but you have the, you have the transcript. And then if you want, you can, you know, you can have it human transcribed, but then you can give it to a real writer. And then and once the book comes it. out, then you have people take pictures of it. Like this picture, this actually was taken and made into a postcard and mailed back to me. Yeah. These three people are at the Dallas airport or 
convention center somewhere and they're holding my book and 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 i'm like wow you know this is awesome oh, i got yeah. photos like that from all over the world and and i mean my books travel more than i do but <laughs> it, it, it's it's those become your marketing pieces yeah you know but one of the things i think one of the things that really irks me right now is i go into these offices i go into these uh and i see their brochures i see their websites mm -hmm. and they'll have a testimonial and then i'll just say mark h <laughs> who the hell is mark h I mean, yeah you, 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 you always assume it's made up it's made up yeah. Yeah. And, and, and my, my, I was, I was at an office the other day. I said to my wife, see, it's made up. She says, how do you know? And then she's always my devil's advocate. She goes, yeah. it could be for privacy reasons. I'm like, if the person gave a testimonial, you use the first and last name. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, 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 I always, and you know, first off, I'd rather have a testimonial on video than anything else. Yeah. Right. But if it if it's written testimonial, I'm every time I get a chance is there's a picture of them. There's where they live. There's what they do. There's their career. There's their full name. Um, there's, you know, er, er, everything in the in the world that you can that right. you can do there. And and again, I mean, when you talk about legal, medical, um, um, you know, or, or financial advisors and compliance, there's an awful lot of things that people can say that does comes nowhere near. Right. anything that any regulator is ever going to worry about you know the i've worked with this guy for 32 years i trust him and by the way they're a lot of fun to be around well you know i mean great um you know it's it, it's a it's a character reference it doesn't say this person consistently got me 28.2 percent right. return year after year in up markets and down markets and whatever he does is magical well that you're not going to get away with right but um uh but the type of thing that you're talking about you know, somebody sending a, a picture with a book in the airport. Now, that's just great. That's great yeah. stuff. Uh, have you ever been to Stu Leonard's? No. Mm -hmm. um, it's um, um, uh, up by West Point. It's up in the Hudson Valley, um, north of New York City. Um, uh, Dan been to West Point a few times, though. Yeah, yeah. So so right across the Hudson, it's uh, where the locations will come to me in a minute. But it was uh, when uh, Tom Peters did his original books in search of excellence, passion for excellence, one thing or another, he used Stu Leonard's a lot as examples. And it was the highest revenue per square foot dairy store in the, mm -hmm. probably in the world. And in other words, it's, you know, a, 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 a limited inventory grocery store. Mm -hmm. um, but you go into Stu Leonard's and they have people with their Stu Leonard's shopping bag at the Eiffel Tower, at the Great Wall of China, you know, all, all these different places you're going, it's a fucking grocery store. <laughs> but, you know, they've got, they've got this like cult following <laughs> and the same thing you're talking about with, with the book cover, you know, all just uh, on, on all their trips. And, but it makes it interesting. It makes it entertaining, you know. And, and in the dairy, last time I was there in the dairy section, we, we do uh, uh, client training at West Point a lot. We'll go to the... Um, there's a, a beautiful old hotel there. It's right on property. I'm trying to remember the name of the, of the hotel, but, um, uh, uh, but obviously leadership, you know, mm -hmm. in one thing or another, but I always try to take people to Stu Leonard's because it's just such a unique experience, but it's, it's personality. It's, uh, you know, they have a big animatronic cow in the milk section and, you know, all this crazy thing. And it's one of these things that there's only one way through, you know, it's, it's like going to Disney where they have the walkway, and they even have arrows on the floor and you have no choice, you know, but to, to, to go this direction. And, you know, it forces people essentially to go look at every item that's a high margin that they, they want to, they want to pitch, but it's the same thing. It's that, it's that ongoing, just effervescent personality. Right. And you go, what the hell does that have to do with, you know, buying a gallon of milk? Well, it doesn't have anything to do with a gallon of milk other than they're charging an extra 10 or 15% for that gallon of milk because they make it an experience rather than it's just, I go to Seven Eleven or, or I go to uh, you know, Costco heaven forbid or whatever. Right. Yeah. It's, it's all about the experience. And yeah. uh, you know, if you go into a place and, 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 you know, you're, you're getting this, this Vulcan talking to you and, and, and he's not giving you any information and, and, you know, it's just, you, you walk out thinking, wow, you know, that was horrible. That yeah. guy could have been the smartest person in the world. And, could have gotten you the best rate, but the experience was hard. You're not going to go back and you're not going to refer people. But yeah. yet, if you go in there and, 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 you know, before you even sit down, he offers you coffee or, 
or you know all this extra stuff that nobody else is doing you know calls you by name and or you know sends you a book to begin with before you even get to his office that's the experience yeah and and, and you're going to be you're going to you're going to want to stay with him for the rest of your life yeah well and and uh you know going back to the the podcast and the books and so forth you know one of the things that um it really dawned on me a couple of years ago when I started working a lot more in this niche than I had before, you know, I had, I, I had gotten into, into working with advisors just because I was, as you know, so high profile running the martial arts schools that I was constantly getting people wanting me to help them with their marketing and help them with staff development and so forth. And uh, one of the uh, gentlemen I started working with to begin with, he's in the, you know, the top 100th of 1% in his company, you know, num- you know, the top 60 of all time in a, company that has like 8,000 advisors at any one time. And of course they have about a 97% failure rate in the first couple of years. Um, but he, you know, he was one of the first ones I started working with, but when I really got back in, into this, I, I went and listened to everybody's podcasts, right. And bought every book on Amazon, bought every book on, on eBay. So all the stuff that was out of print as well, you know, every program I could get, but you know, I, I, what, what was interesting to me, there's a couple of people in the, Dan Caprell is one of them. A couple of people who are more or less competitors to me, you know, if, if you sat down and looked at it objectively, but I, and, and uh, uh, Jason uh, uh, Pollard, um, Justin, Jason, uh, Jason, I think, um, but I listened to their, you know, their podcasts online, subscribe to their newsletters, and, you know, several of these people I've met, and I've done podcasts with and so forth, but long before I met them, I felt like I knew them, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was listening to like Dan's stuff and he, he has his son now working with him. Who's, you know, recent, uh, college graduate there in Tennessee. So he talks about, I think it's university of Tennessee or something that he's a big fan of. And, you know, he calls his son, the clone and he's into fly fishing or some damn thing. And none of which I have any particular interest <laughs> in, but you're hearing the stories and all of a sudden you feel like, you know, the person. Mm-hmm. And I remember when I met the guy the first time, you know, now I've been, listening to his stuff and reading his stuff but he has he doesn't know me from adam Mm -hmm. uh i know i know several friends who are you know pretty high profile celebrities and they they talk about that same dynamic is people will come up to meet them and they already know who they are they know a bunch about them but they they don't know them well one of my friends with former new york city police commissioner he he talked about he and james woods met each other and he was a big fan of james wood james was a big fan of his neither one of it ever met and (laughs) and woods was afraid to approach him it's like you know, it's like, but, but it, I, these guys, I felt like I knew them and I liked them and I enjoyed their stories. And I wanted to figure out how, you know, how can we work together? How can, how can I help you? Uh, you know, what can, what can we do together? Just because all of a sudden it's like having an old friend because mm-hmm. you're hearing this stuff. Now, if, if they had been, everything they did was dry and here's how the, you know, the market works and here's what this works. You know, I've, I've read a lot of textbooks in my day. I don't remember the authors of any of them and I don't have any interest in meeting them and I don't have any desire, but the stuff that you do and hopefully the stuff that I do, but you know, the, the nice thing about video, about audio, about podcast environments, about blogs is the informality is the, is the uh, secret sauce in a lot of ways. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's just, People look at me and they're like, well, Rob, you're all over the place. You, your branding is off. You're this or that. And I'm like, yeah, what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> to, me, it's, to me, it's all encompassing. You know, it's, I think every entrepreneur um, worth his salt has ADD. You know, we yeah, have yeah. to be entertained by something. And, and you know, when I'm, when I'm looking at the things that I do, you know, it has to speak to me. And people are like, well, that doesn't make sense. It needs to speak to the consumer. No, because, yeah, the, ultimately the consumer is going to buy from me. Right. But if I don't feel passion in it, I'm not going to create it, which means that nobody's going to ever see it. So, you know, the, the, the e-heroes brand is different than, than, than the, the uh, Rob versus brand, which is different than some of the other book brands. But it's all me as the author. Yeah. You know, and the, and, and, and the e-heroes is the branding for the podcast and it's right. interviewing, you know, people like me, but other entrepreneurs and, and coaches and, and, and business owners. And then you do a lot of, a lot of things with that just for right. everybody's clarity. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, but you're always going to find me somewhere on the internet. I mean, I, I'm not always in front of the computer, which boggles some people's minds because they're seeing me everywhere. Yeah. But I, I, I use a program and, and it's called Social B. I don't, you know, it's no secret sauce. It's just, I throw all my content in there. I schedule it out and I walk away. And, uh, you know, you have to, you have to, sometimes you got to step away from the computer. You oh, have yeah. to live a life. You have to take your personality out there and meet people. And to me, it's, 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 I've never had a problem meeting people. I mean, I'm in, whether I'm in Disney world in line or whether I'm in the grocery store in line, I'm always introducing myself and having fun and, and, and whether they ever buy from me again, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm learning about them, mm -hmm. whether I put them in a future book, whether I use them as an example in a story on social, all that's a teachable moment to somebody. Mm -hmm. you know, well, and, and, and just, just be an observant yeah. of, of what's going on around you. I mean, I, I, I don't know how many great business stories I've had just from taking my kids to Disney, right. Mm -hmm. uh, both of good and bad, you know, I, um, but you, you, en you end up with these stories of, you know, I remember my son, we, uh, uh, there, there, there was a great, hopefully it's still there. Um, uh, Z ultimate, I think something like that. It was, um, but here, here's what the business is. You'll appreciate this if you haven't seen it. Is you you go into uh, downtown Disney, and I think it's at Disney World and at Disneyland. And what they sell is remote control uh, model cars, right? Mm -hmm. So you can buy a Lightning McQueen model car. And when we went to this, and the first time I was there, I had my daughter, who's now a you know senior in college, and my son, uh, who's in high school. But you know, she was young enough to still be kind of into this. And he was maybe four. And so we go into this place and here's what it is, is you can design your own car. They have a mechanics bay and they have a mechanic there that helps you assemble it. And so you can get the little Porsche, you know, the blue Porsche from uh, cars, but then they can have side pipes and they have a blower on the hood and they have stripes and one thing or another. And just out of curiosity, uh, cause I just couldn't help myself once I pulled my credit card out right across the street. And I mean, like you can see it in the window is the Disney store. And you know, they're not, you know, they're not uh, charging a, a low price. There's the lightning McQueen, uh, car remote control that you can buy in the Disney store for 45 bucks. Right. Just, to, you know, out of curiosity, I go on my phone and I look at Walmart and I can buy the lightning McQueen remote control car on the Walmart site. For, I think it was 22 bucks at the time. Well, the Lightning McQueen car in this store was $114, right? So by the time we got done with, do you want you know, the rechargeable battery? Do you want the extra super duper battery? Uh, is the Porsche going to have side pipes, which of course the engine's in the back, it, you know, Porsches can't have side pipes, but there was no telling my uh, son that that was not a, a deal. You know, there was a blower over the trunk, which is, there's nothing under there but it had to have the blower. It had to have the, the racing stripes. By the time I was done, it was $114. Mm -hmm. And the difference between the $23, the $45, and the $113 was the experience of the mechanic, and they put it together and, and all this stuff. Because I dropped 300 bucks in this store, and it was worth every penny. Yeah. Well, because yeah, there was, you know, there Disney, was no... Disney knows how to capitalize on the experience. They do the same thing at Galaxy's Edge with lightsabers. Yeah, you can exactly. get a lightsaber at Walmart for 20 bucks. I mean, yeah. yeah, it's plastic. It may not be that great. Or you can buy a $200 lightsaber and assemble it and watch it being made and doing this and doing that. And, 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 and there's a long line out the door for people that want to do this. Oh, yeah. There's not a line for the $20 sabers at no. uh, Walmart. There's the line for the $250 ones that have a guy mm -hmm. in a in a, a stormtrooper costume standing there. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So it. <laughs> It's all in the experience that that you give people. And just like Disney does every single day, you can do it in your business, you know, and and I always tell people, okay, maybe you're new in business, but don't charge low prices. And people are like, well, I need to get business. People don't know who I am. I'm like, well, they don't know who you are if you've been in business 20 years either. Yeah. Yeah. Charge higher prices. And and to me, it's just that was my problem when I first started. You know, I had a, I had a cleaning business a long time ago, in 1995, and for three years I struggled because I thought, okay, I have my prices have to be like my competitors. We got to do this, this, and this. 
until I realized that I was delivering a better experience than they were. I was doing this, this, and this, and they weren't doing that. I, so I, I ended up, and this is when websites were first coming out. I explained my process to a T mm -hmm. and my prices, you know, and then I, I, I my price is 50, 60%. And I was getting calls. I mean, I, I couldn't keep up. I had to hire more people. I had to buy more vehicles. And, and so, yeah, my prices were higher, but right off the bat, I explained to people exactly what I was going to do for them. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's, there's a, there's a great book, you know, it's a classic. I think I, I stumbled across it because I was taking uh, Tony Robbins seminars on influence, but it's uh, Robert Cialdini influence science and practice. You know, it's, it's an absolute classic when it comes to sales, but the practically the opening line in the first chapter is a story about pricing. Um, but the takeaway is absent other objective criteria price determines perspective or perception of value. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mentioned, you know, hiring mm -hmm. attorneys that were just a ridiculous amount per hour. Well, I didn't know, you know, a, a, you know, a best franchise attorney from the worst franchise attorney, truth be told. Uh, but if they were charging me hundred, you know, eleven hundred and twelve dollars an hour or whatever the hell it was, obviously they're good, right? Um, <laughs> and 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 that's the way people think about this stuff, you know. Now now, it's not true if I want to buy a case of toilet paper or I have a, you know, a company party and I'm going to go buy uh, ten thousand um, burgers. Uh, but what what we do both in the service that you and I provide, but in the service that a front, an advisor provides, the service that an attorney provides, the service what a doctor provides, what you want is you want the best one at the, what they do, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I, I tell people I work with all the time, they, they don't make the decision of who's cheapest. They make the decision of I want the best guy. And then is it going to work into my budget, right? That's the decision-making criteria. And oftentimes, if they can't work into the budget, they're not going to they're not going to go for the second best. They're going to try to figure out a way to, to work out exactly who they think is best into their budget. Uh, right. Pricing is a, is a, is a, is a, is a strange element. The, uh, the, the Cialdini story is it, it was a, a, a gift shop and there was a, what do you call it? Topaz or, you know, whatever the green stones is they sell like in Arizona mm -hmm. and gift shops and the owner is going on vacation. So she tells the assistant manager, uh, they have this big bowl of this stuff. It hasn't been selling. So she leaves a note and the note's supposed to say, cut the price in half. They go on vacation. And what's happened is the manager misread the note and doubled the price. And now while the manager was, was gone on vacation, they sold out of this stuff. And she comes back and says, oh, you know, cutting the price worked. They go, cutting the price. I thought you're crazy. I doubled the price. And all of a sudden people couldn't get enough of it. Well, <laughs> You know, they, they all thought it was it was something precious, you know, suddenly and and they were buying based on that. But that's the way what you do works. It's the way what I do works. It's the way that any advisor now advisors sometimes don't have much control over over, you know, what their what their pricing is. But still, they can charge a planning fee. Mm -hmm. They can charge ongoing uh, ongoing fees, et cetera. And, you know, the worst thing to do is be to to be having a negotiation on price. Oh, yeah, well, he charges one percent. I'll charge you know, 0.65%. Well, okay, but, you know, why, why do I want the cut rate guy handling my <laughs> retirement savings, right? Mm -hmm. I want I want somebody who's good on, on I, top. I had, a, I had a client that's a travel agent, and most travel agents get paid on the back end. So once yeah. you're done your trip, they get a percentage. And some of these have to wait six months to a year to finally get that money. Well, you know, I, I said to the, the, the client, I said, you know, that's ridiculous. I said, you're doing all this stuff that's way more than most travel agents do. You're providing concierge calls. You're doing this, this, and this. I said, why don't you charge a fee for that? Mm -hmm. Well, we're not supposed to in this industry. So I said, so too. I said, you can have a tier where they're paying for concierge service above and beyond what you're doing for the travel. And uh, I said, price it starting at like $4.99 or $8.99 or whatever. She says, I don't know about that. I said, try it. Yeah. So she did. And she said, every single person she told about all signed up. Yeah. Within, you know, the, the, the first couple of months. And she's like, wow. And then she upped her price a little bit more because 
she knew she could get it at that point. Yeah. And I think we all just need that confidence boost. But one thing I do not like to do is ever ask somebody what their budget is. No. Because most times they don't know. And sure. So if I'm thinking, okay, this client is worth, I don't know, $50,000. Just, you know. And they come back and they say, well, our budget's ten. What am I going to do for 10000 So yeah. then I cut all these services out. I'm like, yeah, okay, now I can help you. Now they're uh, not going to be happy. Not only are they, they're going to be the biggest pain in the asses ever. Mm -hmm. They're going to expect you to do that $50,000 worth of work for 10. No, 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 no. Get rid of them. Don't even, if they got to be able to afford you, you know, and, and I think that's where a lot of entrepreneurs make that mistake. They, they cut their rate in order to get more clients and in, in, in hopes that they can build this business. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and they're fighting a, a never ending battle. Yeah, and and and, and they, uh, you know, not to put too fine a line to it, but they take anybody who can fog a mirror, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and then the other thing I see is they're afraid to fire clients, and and right. you know you can you can fire people nicely. It doesn't have to be you know you uh, you know you take them to a public square and execute them. <laughs> um, you know, That'd but be nice. <laughs> that would be nice. Well, with some of them, it would be. Um, I, I think there are legal consequences to that. Um, but um, yeah, I mean it's. I, I've um, and again I stole this from somebody probably Tom Peters, but you know taking the bottom twenty percent and getting rid of them, mm -hmm. and then doing that regularly is is one of the most refreshing things you can do. You know I I know your your business is structured I think a lot like mine is. You know I I tell people the biggest thing that changed in my life is I started getting rid of all the stuff that pissed me off, yeah. and got rid of all the people who pissed me off, and all of a sudden when I was doing the stuff I liked that I was good at and not dealing with people who annoyed me is my income quadrupled, you know, and, and, and my work hours improved my, uh, you know, um, uh, attitude and improved dramatically. Everything improves. One of the benefits of writing books about my adventures dealing with, you know, morons and scammers and whatnot is I think a lot of my clients are afraid to, to, to mess with me now because <laughs> they might get into the book. Or the next you, be, you, be, you become like Taylor Swift <laughs> with boyfriends. They don't want to, they don't want to be used as an example. No, I, <laughs> you know, I have never been compared to Taylor Swift, but thank you. There you go. There you go. Well, that, you know, it, it, isn't that the secret of her success that she writes about what assholes all of her boyfriends <laughs> or former boyfriends are. But you know, with, with, with financial advisors too, they could say, look, our starting limit, hundred thousand dollars or 200,000 or a million. Right. Oh, yeah, and yeah. when you get to that level, all you're going to do is attract people that are exactly the type of people that you want. Yeah. And it makes it so much easier to work with. Yeah. Well, what you, one of the examples I use a lot in that, uh, in, in this industry is Fisher investments and, and they're blatant about it. I mean, every, everything they, they do is if you have a million or more then blank, 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 you know, here's how to deal with half a million or more, you know, it's it, their headlines, mm -hmm. uh, or the subheads are all telling you, you know, if you don't have half a million, don't even, you know, darken our door. Um, and, you know, but people are afraid to do that. They're afraid to, one, not take anybody who has a pulse. Right. And what, what happens, as you know, when you're starting out your business, you mentioned it before when you start out as, you know, in the, the carpet cleaning business is, you know, you think you have to charge low rates and, and take anybody who, you know, whose credit card might, may or may not clear. But, if you start with day one of being premium and you start with day one of being top tier and you start with day one of only taking people who are quality clients, well, that creates this attraction mechanism where you attract more like what you want and you automatically repel what you don't want. But if you, if you're, you know, desperate to get anything that moves, right. Is it does the opposite, right? Nothing's, nothing's more repellent than desperation. Uh, and nothing's more attractive than than people who uh, really don't need the business, who don't need the, uh, uh, who only want to work with people who are who are a good fit for them. Yeah, yeah, you know, and, and there's a lot of service industries out there uh, that will accept clients the same day. Yeah, and I, and I always think that's a bad way to do things because now the customer knows that you're desperate for work, or you don't have enough work that you're going to take me right away. You know, so. One of the first things I did was I would put people off two to three weeks. I mean, this is in the cleaning industry. You can use it for any industry, but put people off, you know, 
I can't service you today. Uh, our next opening is in two, three weeks. In the meantime, I'm going to send you some information via email, via mail, via whatever, so you can get to know us. Yeah. And so, and then I'd have the opportunity to pre-sell what I call the upsell. So yeah, I would yeah. send them, send them coupons, send them this, send them that, so that when my technician or myself got there, they're already inclined to say, well, yeah, well, I know I scheduled these two rooms, but now I want this, 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 and this. And now we walk away with hundreds of dollars more, you know, so anybody could do that. It's sure. just, you know, I, I'm kind of glad I'm not in the cleaning industry anymore. I'm getting too old. I, I love what I do now in consulting and, and writing books and helping people. But every industry you can learn from. You bet. And uh, you just have to learn to adapt it to what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and certainly that's what I've adopted is, you know, is we bombard them with information mm -hmm. and give them an incredible amount of free material, but then they have to jump through a lot of hoops. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I, you know, anytime I talk to somebody, they've been through two other people before they ever get to me mm -hmm. and they're not shy about, you're not a good fit. Let's go do this other thing. And I'm not shy about it. You know, I'm, I'm, um, um, in fact, I, some, and of course it works better that way, but you know, sometimes I have people practically begging, well, what do I have to do to work with you? I, you know, I just don't think it's a good fit. Um, you know, it's, it's not looking like it's, uh, it, it's, you know, you're, you're not in the place right now where, where you uh, look like you'd be a good client. Well, when you have that attitude and it's not about arrogant, cocky, egotistical, is one, they know you have their best interests at heart. You're not just looking to get their credit card. And number two is you protect your mental space and your 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 workspace to not let people invade who are going to uh, create problems. Hey, Rob, we could go on forever. I didn't really, we've been, we've been at this for an hour. And um, uh, uh, tell everybody a, just a little bit more about what you do. And, and uh, uh, you know, I, I, I certainly highly recommend all your books and, and all your other information. You have some great stuff on social media marketing, online marketing. But of course, the Rob, you know, again, I'm going to steal your, your uh, Rob meets the wackadoo and Rob meets. I, it, it won't have Rob in it, but I'm, I'm going to steal a couple of those titles from you. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I, uh, I have a, a marketing agency. Uh, we also do publishing. And, uh, you know, one of the, the things that we do is, is make sure that your online presence gets you to the authority that you deserve. Uh, Google is a pain in the butt. Everybody knows it, Facebook and, and LinkedIn. But you have to be there. You have to get your presence known. You have to get your personality out there. And your brand has to attract people. And, and one of the things I don't like to do is just do brand awareness for brand awareness, because to right. me, it's awful. I want you to get clicks, which amount to calls or dollars in your bank account. Yeah. Because honestly, there's a lot of companies out there that say, hey, we can get you clicks. But can I take clicks to the bank? Yeah. So... You know, you can go to my website, onspotmedia.com. You can find me on Facebook. You can pretty much find me everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. Um, you know, I, I like to channel people over to LinkedIn because it gives people more of an idea of who I am, what I do. Uh, or you could go to the very beginning of this video and scan that code that was on that picture. Oh, there. I could I can actually bring that back <laughs> up here, I think. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see if I can let's see if I can find it again in my uh, and that yeah. code will tell you more about me. It'll give you all the social channels that I'm on. It'll give you some video testimonials of, of great people telling you all kinds of great stuff about me, which, you know, we all like to do. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. The, um, um, yeah, it's not, it's not hard to find you. Um, no, no. And, and, and sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll scurry you away because you're not, you know, sarcastic enough for me. You, you, you said something there that I, I want I want to, uh, among other things, emphasize is you're building authority through one presence ever there. There, there, there we go again. There well, it is. Hopefully I showed the right thing there. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, I, I, I've, I've been known to uh, choose the wrong screen. I think one time I had a uh, a wallpaper of a number of nude supermodels that ended up showing when I shared screen. Uh, so that was. That was that was that was not an ideal approach, but um, <laughs> if, if you find me there, then there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, uh, 
you know, the, the, the building authority, there's, there's several elements to that, right? Is, you know, the search engines and so forth in part um, uh, rate authority based upon links and based upon mm -hmm. how many places you're found out online and how many people are interacting with you online. But the general person who's going to look to work with you as a client, they base your authority to a great extent by, uh, I think the number is now 85%, especially 85% of women are going to go Google you before they ever interact with you on in your business, right? Yeah. Uh, now, and I, and I may not go Google the Dairy Queen before I pop in and get an ice cream cone, but if I'm going to drop 50 grand, 100 grand, if I'm going to let you manage a million dollars of my money, I'm going to go do some research on you, right? Mm -hmm. And and what I want to do is I want to be found everywhere, right? right? I want them to find YouTube channels, podcasts, books, I, I, I'm showing up on Amazon. I'm, they're finding several websites. They're finding personal stuff. They're finding business stuff. They're finding LinkedIn profiles, all that stuff. And you do that brilliantly. And part of it is in creating content that you can then um, utilize and, and syndicate everywhere. And part of it is just being aware of all the different places that you should be and, and, and how you should be seen out there. Well, and, and also not saying no to these types of interviews or, or podcasts is, and, and that's one of the greatest exposures you're going to get is getting on someone's podcast. Yeah. You know, they're going to share you to, to their network, their audience. And, and, and so you can't be shy, Yeah. you know, just be out there. Yeah. Well, Rob, Hey, this, this has been wonderful. I, I, uh, I, I know there's about 20 takeaways in there if somebody will sit and watch this with a pen and piece <laughs> of paper. Uh, but certainly one takeaway is don't be boring. Another takeaway is be found everywhere. Another mm -hmm. takeaway is that publishing, and especially with the comp uh, company, an individual who's got great experience with this is an easy, a relatively easy thing to do, um, or at least it's simple on the author's part of creating content and getting, getting it out there. And then it can get, you know, it, it can get out there in, in Amazon and Barnes and Noble and online every, every, everywhere in the, in the world. Uh, certainly another takeaway is, you know, don't be like everybody else. Be, be different, figure out what your hobbies are, figure out what your personality is, figure out, you know, people that you like associating with, people you don't like association with and, and wear it on your, on your sleeve. And, uh, um, you know, so there's an awful lot of takeaways buried in there. And I've only touched the surface on what people should have gotten out of this if they go through. And I know it's it's out of sync for a, t a lot of attorneys that you work with. It's out of sync for uh, MDs. and It's out of sync for financial advisors. But the ones that stand out, uh, an example I used in my uh, book, by the way, was, uh, God, what's his name? The uh, uh, the famous attorney that was always in the suede jacket with the tassels, with the long silver hair. Um, oh, yeah. Um, I can't I'm, think I'm, of his name. Yeah, it'll, it'll probably come to me as soon as we stop recording. But uh, you know, it, it's again, you don't have to be boring, and you don't have to be, you know, wearing a Brooks Brothers suit to be taken seriously and to have a high level of credibility. But yeah, you, you do have to be human. Yeah, yeah, and and you have to let that humanity out. And and you know, even though my one book was called Rob versus Humanity, it was not about me versus humanity. Technically, it was about me trying to save humanity from themselves, because honestly, we need to get out there and, and be our own personal brand. That's how we're going to grow. You know, everyone's going to grow their business that way. Yep. You know, yep. It, it's, we don't always have the money to create an empire like Disney or Coca-Cola, but we do have enough personality out there that we can grow our business one person at a time and in the next few years, you got thousands of customers that, you know, have accumulated that are going to start making you money. Right. Well, and, and, and uh, just, I guess, to wrap up, you know, the advisors are all fixated on one at a time referrals. Right. But, you know, if you're not interesting, it's kind of hard for your clients to have a conversation over lunch about you. Right. Mm -hmm. Is. You know, I'm not, I'm not sitting down talking about this guy has a great life policy that it does this and it, they're not having a conversation about that, but Hey, I, you know, I, I've got this guy I've been working with. He's so, he's, he's, he's so f fantastic to work with. He's been doing a great thing with my retirement portfolio, but he's really into fly fishing. And did you know, you know, I mean, whatever it is, 
if if you don't have hobbies and interests and something unique about you, what are they going to talk about? Right. You know, they're not they're not going to talk about oh this this guy, you know, it can, sold me his policy from Northwestern Mutual. Well, BFD, right? I mean, it's just not uh, it, it's just not that interesting. Hey, on that note, we we better wrap it up. But uh, thank you so much, sir. It's been uh, it's been fascinating. And again, we could have done this eight hours. Uh, maybe we'll do it sometime so we can we, block we uh, create yeah. content. Yeah. We should do eight hours and, and, and people can watch. And yeah, it'd be fun. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It, what, what was there? One of the Shakespeare's movies, they did that. They did the whole thing in a movie for six hours. But, I, I don't know, think I, I wanna, uh, before we end, uh, yeah. you know, imagine you had eight hours to develop content. What would you do? What would you talk about? I want you yeah. to think about that, because honestly, if you spent eight solid hours creating content, you'd have enough content to last you all year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just set aside one day. One day. Yeah, uh, with 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 the phone turned off, with the office door locked, and just and just plow it out, uh, mm-hmm. and then you can create an enormous amount of content. I mean, right. eight hours you could do 16, 30 minute blocks, yeah. and then that uh, uh, that becomes a couple of books. It becomes a ton of blog posts. It becomes all kinds of material. But that's exactly right. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm going to turn us off now. And, Adios, everyone. Uh, a day.